Chapter 1. Jim Bright was the last person in the world Alex expected to see sashaying up to the bar in Barney's Pub, the most notorious bar, gay bar in Westside, Washington. Jim had been Mr. Everything in high school almost 50 years ago, all-conference quarterback for the Jefferson High School Golden Wave, track star, holder of the state record in the mile, 4 minutes, 28 seconds, class president, unopposed, voted most handsome and most likely to succeed, both in and out of bed was the popular quip at the time. I threw a knife pissed in my panties when I saw Jim Bright. I squirted beer out of my nose to boot. Wouldn't that have been a fine kettle of fish? Maybe he'd have run over and done a Heimlich on me. If a murder mystery were to be set in the wet side, the murder would have to take place under the bare red bulb in the well entrance at, at the in the well at the entrance to Barney's on a rainy night. Picture a black body as two-dimensional as a paper doll, face down in black, black water, the blood like an oil slick as bright as neon. Inside are plush leather booths and an antique redwood bar salvaged from a 19th century salon in, Can in San Francisco and hauled north on a flatbed trailer. Behind the bar hangs a huge, ornately framed mirror, pitted and distorted. A profusion of flower pots hangs from heavy wooden beams above the bar, doubled by the mirror. Music comes from a 1950s style jukebox loaded with 45 RPM singles from that era. Rockabilly from the old Sun Studios, Carl Perkins, Elvis, Jerry Lee, plus lots of Broadway show tunes and a smattering of Fats Domino and Little Richard and the undisputable local favorite, Louis. Louis by the Kings. <laughs> Lounging against the back wall are cardboard figures of Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, Elvis in a gold lame suit, Rock Hudson, and Doris Day. There are no beer ads or commercial messages of any kind, but on the night when Jim Bright showed up, there was a single political poster featuring a pop art portrait of Barack Obama. It hung over the booth where Alex was seated. Calling Barney's a gay bar is something of a stretch, even if they do have drag shows once a week. It would be more accurate to call it a bohemian bar, a hangout for artsy types. Alex Martin was not a lesbian, had never been, unless you count a bit of experimenting back in college. And that one summer night when she and Mary Elizabeth Luscious shared a cabin at Camp Butterfly, which, if you ask Mary Elizabeth about, she had deny on a stack of Bibles. Sometimes Alex wished she was a lesbian, or black, or native, anything but white. She liked herself, her looks, and her mind, but she was not proud of being a member of the privileged and exploitive class. She frequented Barney's because that's where the most interesting people hung out. It was a week before the 2008 presidential election when she first spotted Jim Bright in Barney's. He was wearing a Ron Paul button and she was wearing a Barack Obama button. He was drinking Budweiser and she was drinking Black Butte Porter. She thought she recognized him as her old school chum, but she wasn't sure it really was him. She would have been mortified if she had spoken to him and he turned out to be someone else. For a moment, she had the horrifying thought. God, what if this guy turns out to be Jim's son? Could that possibly be? She screwed up her courage and approached him. Hi. Mind if I join you? Her voice trembled ever so slightly, but he didn't seem to notice. He said, Not at all. My name's Jim. Hi, Jim. I'm Alex. I love that name. First girl I ever loved was named Alex. Oh, be still, my freaking heart. Did he really just say that? She slithered onto the stool next to him in what she intended to be a rather provocative manner, crossing her long legs so that a lot of thighs showed. She had always been proud of her legs. Muscular calves and thighs, lengthy but not too thin definitely her best feature. 
At 5 foot 11, she was pretty damn tall for a woman. Gargantuan and terribly sensitive about it in her youth, but comfortable with her size now that taller women are more common and are looked up to figuratively and literally. Look at how tall the hot supermodels are. And if she was not as thin as she once was, she was no fatty either. Solid, that's the word, with ample hips and small breasts that were still fairly firm. Her hair was short. She had high cheekbones and a strong jaw. She wore glasses and tasteful but moderate jewelry. That night she was wearing coral colored lipstick and just a touch of eyeliner. I grew up in Whetside, but I've been gone for over 30 years. I retired a few years back, and then my wife died. It was becoming clear that he did, didn't know her and hadn't an inkling that she knew him. How could he not remember me? Could Batman forget Robin? She told him she was sorry to hear about his wife. Yeah, thank you. After Nancy passed, I kind of got homesick, so here I am starting my life all over. And back where I came from. Starting over must be tough. He talked for a while about his wife. He said, I loved her till the day she died, but I don't think she ever loved me. Like, oh, she pretended for a while, but I could tell. She ripped my heart apart, but I, I'm coping okay now. Besides, I understand. She fell in love with a chimp, and how do you compete with that? That had to be a slip of the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> a chimp? Oh, you mean like a chump or, or a jerk? No, I mean a chimp. A chimpanzee, a big, ugly, hairy chimpanzee named Manlo. You see, he stopped to take a deep breath, and for just a second, she thought she detected a glint of something mad in his eye. Was he mad, this gorgeous hunk of a man? Could it be he was completely bonkers? He let out a big, melodramatic sigh, and then said, uh, This may be a little shocking, but I may as well just come up right out with it. My wife was a sex performer, a stripper, a porn star, a, a really high class exotic dancer. And when I say high class, I mean it. She didn't dance in sleazy strip joints. Oh, no, 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 no. She danced in places where the cover charge was a week's pay for me and the cheapest drinks were 20 or 30 bucks. She performed her very unique act in very private clubs where the wine started at $500 a bottle and the Exclusive clientele was flown in on private jets. And what was her very unique act? You guessed it. Sex with the chimp. And she liked it. I swear she did. Hellfire, she loved it. Manlo had what I didn't have, uh, to be more accurate. He had a lot more of what I had just a little of, if you don't know what I mean. Oh, sure, she said I was out of my mind when I accused her of being in love with the damn animal. But she was. Alex was flabbergasted. How could she possibly, possibly respond? She turned to stone right there on her bar stool. Lot's wife in Barney's pub. She felt as if she couldn't even lift her drinks to take a swig or make a move toward getting away from him, which she felt she ought to do. Fast, like a trapped animal, she stared at him. She could not have been more astounded if his face had just metamorphosed into some kind of a monster primate. And to make the situation even weirder than it was, he seemed to be getting turned on. <laughs> he was staring at her cleavage and she wasn't absolutely sure of this and didn't want to look closer to confirm it but it looked like there was a bit of a bulge in his pants. <laughs> was he getting an erection? He was. He knew it, and he was pretty sure she knew it. That was too much for Alex. Way, way too much, she said. I I'm sorry, I, I, can't, I, I can't do this. I gotta go. And she quickly stood up, and leaving a full beer sign on the bar, she spun around and headed to the door as quickly as those long legs of hers would carry her and that was when he shouted, Hey, slugger! Come back here! God, you're just as gullible as ever. <laughs> that stopped her in her tracks. Slugger? No one had called her that since eighth grade when she outshone most of the boys at baseball. 
now that they each knew for sure who the other was, she settled back in and they talked for hours, reminiscing over old times and arguing politics.